All right, how you guys doing? I just got back from Atlanta, so I'm still catching up on some emails. Some of you guys DM me on Twitter. I'm still catching up on that. So if I haven't uh, responded to you or anything uh, related to that, uh, I apologize. I'm getting through everybody. Um, we're talking about the Las Vegas Cup Series race here. I'll do one for Xfinity and Truck uh, per, per normal. Um, but when we look at the Cup Series here at Las Vegas, this is how I approach it. This is how this is what I do. Okay. So when we're looking at Las Vegas entering this race, okay, we need to understand what we're seeing so far this season. And you might be like, we've only been at Daytona, we've only been at Atlanta. What the fuck does that have to do with Las Vegas? Well, there's two things that I am particularly curious about. It's mainly the Toyota body. And let's kind of, you know, go through it and talk about that as we um, get ready for this Las Vegas race. And so the main thing that they're looking at, or that I'm specifically looking at, is what Toyota is able to do in single car speeds at like a real track. Um, where they're at in practice, where they're at in terms of qualifying. You know, we've already seen that they're qualifying quite shitty in terms of just single car, like pure speed alone at very aero dependent um, qualifying sessions and races, you know, you're just, you're flat out and, and getting pure speed out of it. And we're, we're seeing that the Fords have been faster and stuff. And so this will be the first real test of having all the cars on the track to see how they develop and change, um, and how they handle in the pack. And so when I'm looking at, um, things to note or things that I've written down, you know, in my head that I want to pay attention to, it's where does, where the Toyotas fall in? Um, you know, my early hypothesis would probably be that they're going to end up showing pretty crappy uh, practice speeds, uh, specifically if they're uh, running single car stuff, and mainly due to the fact that they got the new body. Now, yet again, this is something that I just want to see and answer in practice. Uh, does it matter in the race? Fuck no, it doesn't. But it, it matters in terms of the potential practice laps and stuff that we end up seeing from the Toyotas and stuff. So that's like the first thing that I want to th look at and, and, and see. Um, I, I don't foresee them having any issues within the actual race themselves. We've seen that they've just been fine on the pack. But in terms of single car speeds, in terms of where people are going to get uh, poles and qualify and what they're going to look like in practice and stuff like that, um, just trying to envision what we might end up seeing this weekend, that's probably my biggest uh, thing uh, in my head of like, well, you know, does Legacy look bad in practice? Does Joe Gibbs look bad in practice? They're going to be fine in the race, but, you know, people look at practice data and, and you know, weighed so much into that type of stuff. Whereas this is what I look at, and specifically I have this all on the screen in case you guys have watched me before or not. Um, this is how I just look and, and rank stuff uh, based on my own um, things I look at when we look at 1.5 miles, and this is last year's uh, data points. And the main thing that I want to focus on and that I talked about in the track groups video that if you haven't watched that already, um, you can find on 3DFS. A lot of people are like, why well, Why do you use your, your thumbnails the way you are? Because they're really easy to find stuff. You just go to the YouTube channel and then you can just actually see whatever video it is. That's why I, that's why I didn't change the thumbnails for these types of videos and stuff. But if you've seen how I look at groups and how I approach things, well then this is going to look very familiar with you. This is not finishing position. This is the statistics and stuff that I look at and, and rank um, drivers. Um, there's a lot of issues with drive grading which we're not getting into that discussion right here, but this is what I uh, particularly look at in terms of fast laps, pit road speed, uh, average riding position, things of that nature. And so, like, when you look at Homestead, you know, I got Larson ranked as the third best guy at Homestead. He fucking wrecked. He ran into the wall like an idiot. Um, but these are the things that I end up looking at and stuff. And so when we're looking at this, and the whole reason why I have this on the screen is just so people can be aware of it. Um, as I mentioned in the video, in terms of recent form, in terms of we're looking at Las Vegas, so we're looking at all these races, okay? There, there, there is no such thing as, like, good 1.5s, bad 1.5s. It doesn't freaking matter, man. When we look here, you know, when we look at how William Byron does, wow, William Byron was really good in the spring at Las Vegas last year, man. You know, is he going to be a good play? I don't know. He was good everywhere, okay, my guy? What about the highway racetracks? I don't know. All these tracks are highway racetracks now. What are we talking about, okay? Come on. What are you doing? I'm walking here. So, like, I, I, I just don't see a reason to be like, well, we got to look at specific 1.5 miles at flat tracks with high tire. Like, that's fucking a waste of time. With that, that you're, you're, you're holding yourself back. The only thing that I would look at in terms of, um, you know, recent form is we're just going to remove Las Vegas one. We're going to remove Nova, Kansas, Darlington one, Coca-Cola. We're looking at this here. Uh, these, this is what I'm looking at entering um, this Las Vegas weekend. And so who was, uh, I just got a notification on discord um so when we're looking at entering this weekend at las vegas okay who is probably going to be fast who is probably yet again we know i'm salary I'm, I'm recording this like tuesday at like noon ish 
and stuff. Who, who, who's most likely going to be priced up? It's probably going to be the Hendrick guys, Larson, Byron, you know, people like that. But when we look at people who were fast, like William Byron is going to actually let's uh, let's just do this for now, so I'm not. That's not what I want to do. So let's just do that. So let, let's look at this. So who was fast towards the end of last season? And the reason why we're looking at this is it's the next-gen car. Yes, we have different uh, bodies on the Toyota and the Ford. Uh, Chevy's still running their same stuff. But like that, that's really the only uh, change that we need to pay attention to in practice. Or not even pay attention to in practice, but just be aware that that will probably have an effect on what they do in practice speeds. And yet again, this is the first race um, with the new Ford and um, – Toyota on, on a real racetrack, and so, you know, this will be a good indicator of where these guys are in terms of aerodynamic capabilities uh, at these tracks, but that's really the only thing. And so, like, who's going to be fast at Las, at Las Vegas this weekend? I, it's going to be the Hendry guys, like Larson, you know. It's going to be Byron. Wow, real surprise. You know, Reddick's going to, like, all the guys who were fast towards the end of last season. That's why we're, we're what I do is basically keep, like, a running tally of, like, last, like, five, six, seven, you know, 1.5 and stuff. And then, you know, we get Las Vegas and then we have like a bunch of like crappy races. And then we go to, um, you know, Dover, Charlotte, Kansas one, all that type of stuff in May or uh, late April, May and stuff like that. And so like, you're going to want to use this Las Vegas race with the tail end of last year's stuff to have an idea of where people are going to perform specifically in May and stuff. And so like, it shouldn't practice data. Because people are going to, like, I pull it, we, we look at it in these videos and stuff all the time. But we can't, there shouldn't be things that are, like, shocking in practice, okay? Because there's several times during the end of last season where it's like, oh, man, you know, so-and-so had, 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 he was, like, 17th fastest in practice. Yeah, but he's had a top 10 car in all these races. Like, we, 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 we understand where people are going to fall in line, where people are going to run. You know, Blaney should carry some speed. We should see Blaney in practice in this race have a top 10 car you know we should see byron have a top 10 car we should see larson have a top 10 car this is like in my opinion when we're looking at las vegas and stuff we shouldn't have like complete outlier like you know who'd be an outlier if he performed like better than this type of stuff you know mid-pack like suarez if suarez is like jumping to the top of the board in practice or something like we need to really analyze his laps why was he so fast did he back it up in Q? You know, would swore it like this is what I mean is like an example of like, you know, trying to understand what what is going on in practice here. You know, like Suarez, you know, we're, we're seeing that this guy is averaging, you know, mid pack speed and stuff, which, you know, if he's priced at like 75 to 84, somewhere around there, that's fine. OK, we, we can see him, you know, possibly score some place differential if he scores, if he qualifies in like, you know, the mid 20s or something. If he qualifies in the teens, we're going to have to see like, OK, man, is he starting like the 18th man? He's he's typically averaging, you know, uh, you know, speed within the teens. You know, uh, can, can he really pay that salary off? Do we see him getting place differential to do that? And so, like, you know, if he came out of the, you know, off the trailer this weekend fast, well, then you look at, OK, what's causing that? You know, how did Ross Chastain score at the end of the year? You know, we see Ross Chastain scoring a little more consistent or a little better than Suarez towards the end of the last year and stuff. And so, like, yet again, if, if Suarez, this is like a perfect example. I wasn't even trying to do this. But, like, if Suarez, you know, we, I just showed that, you know, he's, he's averaging, you know, speeds in the teens and stuff. And if Suarez, like, pops up on the leaderboard at, like, ninth, eighth fastest and stuff, well, it's not that crazy seeing how Chastain was slowly moving up the, um, you know, the standings that I use uh, towards the end of last year, I'm sure if I, you know, and this is a situation where, like, you know, I'll pick and choose, not even pick and choose, rather, but, like, for this video, I just want to focus on, like, these races here. I know some people are going to be like, you're fucking insane or having Pocono on here. Like, I don't see any stands on here that are any different. Do you see drastic changes between, like, fucking Las Vegas, Texas, and Pocono? No. Like, what are we doing? Um, but, you know, this is a situation where, like, okay, like if Swore showed up and he was fast, I'd look through his stuff. I'd look through Chastain stuff. I'd look through them through the end of the year. Like, does that, is that wild? Is that crazy? I mean, looking at this, okay, yeah, no, Chastain doesn't. You know, the other track house car was, was slowing speed 
in these races. So, I mean, at that point, you know, it, it wouldn't be that crazy seeing Suarez up there. And then we can look specifically at, you know, what is Chastain doing in practice? Is Trackhouse, you know, how are they performing as a team and stuff like that? And so, like, when we're looking at practice data, like, it's much more than just like, where is this guy ranked in like a 10 lap average? You know, where is this guy ranked in, you know, in the slower group and stuff, you know, it like nothing should truly be surprising. Things get really wild. You know, when we start having guys who have average speeds, uh, let's say like, I know priest got faster towards the end of the year at the short tracks, but like things that would like, wee, 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 set off alarms left and right would be like if priest and like Stuart Haas, like jump to the top of the board. You know, and I'm using that as an example because, like, in your head, you're like, well, that's not going to fucking happen. That's Well, like, we're, we're going to have situations like that to where good cars, you know, based on this type of stuff, have, you know, a bad practice session or they qualify bad. And then people are going to overreact or people are going to be like, well, they're slow or like, oh, we need to chase their place differential. Like, it, 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 it's, you know, like, we need to be looking at a lot more stuff. Uh, like, for example, like if Priest and SHR showed up, let's just say at Las Vegas and were like the fastest team, like true alarm bells would be ringing like nobody would trust that there's no data to support that you know you look at how they've ran at these races you, you you like we don't expect them to be the fastest guys and i'm using them as an example of like same thing in the opposite direction it shouldn't be a shock if hendrick is fast if you know joe gibbs is fast like the reason i brought up joe gibbs and the concern about their their body in practice and since um not Joe Gibbs. We'll look at, like, Truex and stuff. Actually, Truex ran into issues in playoffs. I think Bell would be a better indicator of this. So, like, when we look at Bell, for example, like, race-wise, with what they're bringing, we understand that Joe Gibbs should be pretty fast. We understand that Ty Gibbs is going to be, you know, in the teens. I would not be shocked to see him in Las Vegas finished eighth, ninth. Like, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. However... Uh, this is where, like, you know, I want to see where they look in practice in, in terms of, like, the standings. Does that, does that have an impact on how people um, not even visualize but have an opinion on how they might potentially score in Las Vegas? Like, when we're looking at this here, we understand that. I'm trying to remember who all races for Joe Gibbs. So, like, Ty Gibbs, you know, in the team, not going to be shocked if he finishes ninth. We have Hamlin, who competed as a top five car in, like, every race towards the end of last year and in the other races as well, but we're looking at this as the sample size there. When we look at Bell, I just brought him up, you know, top ten car in speed, you know? Like, we we understand where he's going to be at. I can't for life of me. It's Truex. When we look at Truex, okay? Yes, had a horrific start to the playoffs, okay? Just unfortunate. Got into issues at Darlington. Wrecked on, like, lap four at, like, Kansas or, like, ran the issues and stuff. That just ran like dog shit at Texas, but back to like where he was earlier in the year. Like if we were looking at the other tracks, we'd see Truex as a top, you know, 10 car, top nine car, whatever the situation was. But like we understand that all the Joe Gibbs cars race wise are top 10 cars, correct? That's not crazy. We're looking at stuff that backs that up. Okay. So if they run into a situation where they look piss poor and qualifying, you know, they qualify poorly or they have slower practice times compared to the rest of the field and compared to the norms that they're showing here las vegas is the uh not epicenter not testing ground i'm trying to think of the word but it is the um not even experimental in terms of like dfs stuff but like las vegas would be or i would view it as you know the tipping not even the tipping point because I, I like using more uh, races as like the data set but like las this las vegas race would be if they have slower speeds in practice or they qualify poorly based on how they perform in the races here based on what they have shown in the draft at Daytona and Atlanta, not because of the racing style, but the ability to actually like the car handles just fine in the draft. You know, it might just be the single car speeds that might be bringing them down the totem pole. It should be a situation where the Joe Gibbs cars would still be top 10 cars. Like, we would still project, or I would still project them to be top 10 cars. You know? Like, that's not crazy. Whereas some people might view that as, like, oh, that's the new Joe Gibbs, and we might they might be lower on him or whatever. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like Tuesday. So, like, we have, or at least for me, I'm trying to explain, like, all the situations we might run into, you know, come practice, come the race on Sunday, and already have directions of where I want to be. You never want to be 
it would, with NASCAR DFS, you never want to be on like, you know, Sunday morning, you know, just looking at practice and like doing everything off of practice. Like if you're, if you're not prepared for this stuff or how things might show up or how things might go, you're already like just, you know, you're already losing. Uh, there's a lot of situations that you need to already be aware of or like know what you're going to do. Like for example, RCR, you know, when we look at Austin Dillon compared to Kyle Busch this weekend, Kyle, just off top of my head, let's see if this is right. Kyle should be, I'm going to guess, 8th, ninth, averaging around here, where Dylan would probably be like 18th, 17th. Let's see. So, like, when we look at Dylan, um, a little lower than 18th. Actually, really, actually, that's, uh, let's put Austin Dylan here. Make sure I just get him. So, like, you know, 20th, 21st, back of the field here. Showed speed at Homestead. Okay. So, Kyle Bush should be significantly higher than him probably by like an average of like eight positions. Let's see. Yeah, I can't even spell that correctly. So when we look at Kyle Busch, uh, yeah, right. Maybe not necessarily eight positions, but certainly, you know, a, a pretty big step above Austin Dillon and how that car is performing. And so like when I'm looking at this Las Vegas race, not because he had the seventh best car at Las Vegas last year. I don't give, I don't really give a fuck about that. I'm not looking at the track itself. I'm looking at how they're performing. And so, like, Kyle Busch in practice, Kyle Busch in the race based on this type of stuff, we can easily pinpoint him down from anywhere from, like, you know, 15th to, like, 9th. It's like that's probably where he's going to fall into. If he underperforms, you know, we, he's going to move back from, like, that 15th position or that 15th, like, best car and stuff. I always use the term, like, best car. Uh because that, that's how you build projections. That's how you try and land on the good guys. If you're laying on guys that are typically averaging, and this is what I, I usually have this on here to indicate like where the top 10 is. Like if you can have a guy who typically is, is certainly around the top five, top 10, that's how you get fast laps. That's how you get laps led. You know, you might not have the best car in races, but if you are a top six guy, a top seven guy, you can have one good pit stop. Somebody in front of you can have a bad pit stop, whatever the case may be, and that's how you get the lead. That's how you get in a situation where you get fast laps. That's how you get a situation of, like, in a race, you know, late race restart, or whatever the case may be. Like, we don't have – it's very rare that you have guys who are, like, you know, truly crap in the back, just pop up and get a win out of nowhere or stuff like that. It's typically because these are where the cars are falling into. RFK, for example, you know, like, RFK, I would lean towards probably being, in my view – a potential guy who might end up being the f fastest Ford team in practice and qualifying. When we look specifically at Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher, okay? It's like Keselowski's been, you know, top seven in all these races. When we look at Chris Buescher, pretty much the same situation, okay? We're, we're seeing where he's running and stuff. And then when we start looking at Penske and Logano, so, like, this is how Logano was running. This was how Cindric was running. And then we get Blaney being the only good car last year and showing speed and averaging here. So it should be Blaney as the best car and learning off the track competing for the pole. It should be both RFK cars. And I think we, if everything would go how I think it will in terms of single car speeds in practice, there's a good chance that we either have a Chevy or Chevy from Hendrick or Keselowski, Blaney, possibly even Busher getting the pole. Um, cause I don't think, like I said, my hypothesis right now is that the Toyotas might show a lack of speed and some car speeds, uh, here, or maybe because handling has proven to not be an issue in the pra in, in the pack at all, they might have an increase in downforce in single car speeds. I don't know. That's really my main question mark is, 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 is where the Toyotas fall in line in practice and stuff, because they're going to be fine in the race, but it's going to depend on just what they're showing in practice and stuff. But, like, I know I'm kind of just rambling and stuff. And notice how I haven't, like, mentioned, like, oh, the, the last race at Las Vegas, you know, like, it, it's way more than that. I, I, I almost never specifically look at that situation here. I'm looking at guys that shouldn't shock me or shouldn't, you know, just come out of the woodwork of, like, where the fuck did this guy come from or something like that. Um, and when notice when I'm, like, you know, Let's try and figure out where the pole is going to come from. Let's try and figure out where the practice speed should land. That's like, so I should already, I do that. So I can kind of already have an idea of how I want to build for this weekend or how projections should go or how things should land, should 
Um, and so, like, when I'm looking at, you know, Blaney, Kozlowski, Busher, the Hendrick guys, you know, competing for the pole and stuff, they that should roughly be, like, you know, six to eight guys who will start in the top 13, top 14. And then you fill in um, possibly other Hendrick or other Chevy teams and possibly Joe Gibbs, you know, not having an issue in single car speeds and stuff and them filling up top 10. And so like whenever I do this and the way that I approach stuff is I, I just try and not even visualize. Not saying I, I know everything, but like I, I don't want to be in a situation, you know, when we're looking at practice stuff and we're building stuff for this Las Vegas race that I'm like shocked by practice or qualifying and stuff. Um, and I don't know, for me, like, it, it's not even like picks or anything. It's like we we have the data points leaving last year of where people should fall in line. It should follow that Las Vegas trend, you know, and then we just play as many people who are going to probably average, you know, speeds in the top 10, top 15, finish there. Like, that's how you build lineups, you know. Like, when we're looking specifically at, like, even, like, in the back of the field, you know, we got Spire, who's kind of a loose cannon. Not entirely sure what they're going to show here. Like, Corey LaJoy has been up and down um, in terms of potential last year. Um, like, now now that, now that I've, like, focused on this, let's go back and, like, actually have the entire group here and see how people have changed and stuff. That should be everything. Yeah, okay, so. Oops. 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 Good Lord. Um, like, when we look at the entirety of last year and how people perform, like, Spire is an interesting team. You know, what LaJoy shows, it, he's shown that he's going to average a car that's, like, mid to low 20s, okay, in terms of speed. I'm not saying, like, he can't finish better because we can always have, you know, wild things happen near green flag pit stops, people speeding. We have... A late race caution. We've seen several late wait, late race cautions here at Las Vegas specifically. People run into issues on the restart, specific attitude. They get in the wall or somebody gets in the wall. They're right in the high line and stuff. And they get in the... You know. Also, like, notice how I haven't brought the high line up, okay? I'm sure a lot of people would be like, man, you want to play Larson? You want to play Reddit because they ride the high line? You know, like, yes, sure, they do that. But, like, there's other reasons why we like Larson and these people other than they know how to ride the high line. Like, what the fuck are we talking about here, man? Um, but, like, LaJoy, like, not looking very appealing unless he's, like, qualifying in the 30s or, like, high 20s and stuff. Like, that's somebody I want to avoid. Uh, or I don't want to, like, go goo goo gaga over. Like, when we look at Bubba Wallace in terms of how he's performing, like, who gives a shit if he wrecked Larson? Who cares what's been going on? When we look at Bubba Wallace here, you know, we understand, yeah, sure, he had a, he had the best car at Texas, okay? So they have the ability to show speed. We know that. We know that 2311, you know, yet again, should perform as like a fringe top 10 car. We see um, a situation where they can actually, um, like, not even change stuff on the fly because that makes it seem like like their crew like but uh, that makes it seem like Booty Barker is better than like any any other crew chief. But like this is a competent team, you know. It shouldn't be a surprise if Bubba Wallace is like seventh, eighth fastest at this Las Vegas race. Lux and do a win. Maybe he wins his first ever race. Who knows, man? Um, you know we have Tyler Reddick who like knows how to rip the high side. We like yes, uh, Reddick should be fast this week. Like this this stuff shouldn't come out of out of nowhere, you know. Like Reddick, you're you're telling me looking at how Reddick performed last year, if the Toyotas have bad single car qualifying speeds and he starts like 25th, we're not gonna play Reddick. Like, what are you what are you talking about here? Um, I don't know. Like that. <laughs> this is how I view stuff. This this is how I go about things. And so like in terms of people that we want to focus on or like the picks of like. You know, because really, like, recent, like down the line, like, on, on, like, Sunday, when we're building, when we're looking at the value plays, when we're looking at place differential that comes through, like, yes, all that stuff matters, okay? But what really wins GPPs, what puts you in positions to do well is getting the correct lap leader, getting the correct, like, secondary lap leader, getting the guy who can scrape off fast laps in the sixth, fifth position. He might not ever get the lead today. He might just, you know, be stuck behind. Like, he, he just can't get in front of the guy. He just can't get in front of the leaders. You know, pit lane is just not working out for him, you know. He ends up running fifth, fourth, third all day. He's, like, right there. He just needs a little bit more help to get the win. 
but he's still scraping off, you know, every fourth, every third fast lap, you know, you know, if, if we run like a, uh, you know, we run like a, a 40 lap, you know, run and just every fourth lap, he's just getting the fastest lap because he's in third place, you know, leaders are catching lap traffic, you know, second place is catching lap traffic. And, you know, he's just able to scrape off a fast lap every four laps. Well, that's 10 fast laps in 40 laps. By, like, that, that's how we build lineups. That's how we land on, you know, the correct lineup. Like, it doesn't, like, sure, the value is important. You know, value will come down to chalk or there will be a place difference when it comes through. But, like, these contests, these races are made and broken on can we nail or can I nail. I speak, you know, first person because I got I to gotta nail this stuff, right? Like, can I nail who is going to be in, like, the top five? Who's going to have, like, the top five-ish best cars? Who's going to be a top seven car? Who's going to be a top ten car? You know, once you start, once you're able to, like, lay that stuff out, then you can start projecting, okay, well, this guy can get this percentage of laps. Let, oh, this guy's probably going to get some fast laps, you know, running in third, fourth, fifth for the situation I just spoke there. And, uh, like, that's that's how it goes about it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, the preview videos for me, like, there shouldn't be any shocking stuff, you know, from this. Hendrick guy's going to be fast. I don't know about Bowman. You know, Bowman's the biggest question mark. He'll probably be like a fucking 13th guy. But, like, Byron, Larson. I can't even remember who else is on the Hendrick team at the moment. <laughs> Elliot. Yeah, so, like, Chase Elliott, you know. Let's look at, let's look at how Elliott should perform. This weekend. When we look at Elliott. Going to be a top 10 car. Okay. That's just how it is. Oh, but he performed badly at Las Vegas his last time. Oh, well, he didn't even race. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was injured or something happened at Las Vegas. I'm pretty sure that's when he missed. Maybe he was suspended. I don't know. But, like, clearly, he didn't. yeah, sure, he didn't run Las Vegas. He didn't run, right? Let me check. Yeah, that was, that, that was during the period he was gone last year. Because he did in the first two races and then, you know, missed until, like, race nine or whatever. Um, but, like, when we look at Elliott, like, should fall in line right at, like, the 10th best car this weekend. Like, that's how it should be, you know. He, he should fall in between, you know, 8th and 13th, okay. You know, between the Hendrick pit crew and stuff, should be able to hold him in that position. Shouldn't necessarily see a huge game from him on pit road. Shouldn't see a big fall off the pit road. Everything will be determined on like what they can do on the on the track. We've seen him run well at Las Vegas. We've seen him run shitty at Las Vegas. Just happened to be the only Las Vegas ran the only Las Vegas race he did last season. He was pretty bad. Are we gonna let that influence him? No. Like we we know how how Chase Elliott is doing. We know that Joe Gibbs should be fast. It just depends on what they're showing in terms of some car speed. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Not because I think they're gonna be slow, but I'm curious of what this new body does to them in single car speeds i think they'll be fine in the race reddick should be a contender for you know a top four car you know i think brad keselowski is going to be a top 10 car this week you know and okay so once we've identified that area and that type of stuff well then we can now that we've already established we've spent 28 minutes establishing that right none of this is crazy that i'm saying right now that all that has been established once we get the practice laps and data, okay, we don't let that cloud our judgment. We don't let, you know, we, we're not taking like, you know, oh, this guy was fast or like we need to bump him up. Oh, this guy was incredibly slow. Oh, Reddick's like the, the worst guy in practice. Like, uh, you know, what's going on here? Just X, like, no, we, let, let's analyze the practice laps. Let's analyze the practice session and see if we can uncover why somebody is either faster, or slower than what they should be, or are they right where they should end up being at? You know, a lot of people like this new qualifying format. I think it hinders a lot of people, okay, because, yeah, sure, it used to be like both groups, just the fastest guys would start up front. Um, if you were in a bad group, you'd start farther back. But now there's a real potential that, not only if, if, a, if a group is slow, but I think there could be a lot of deceptful good qualifiers. Um, and this is going to be a group-by-group, race-by-race basis. But one thing that I am concerned about is that uh, some certain rows, you know, from like, I'm trying to think of exactly. So it's group B on, on odds and group A 
evens. And so there's situations to where, I don't know if it'll happen specifically here, I don't even know if it'll happen at all, but it could be a situation where, like, you know, like, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth are like fucking frauds. Like they shouldn't be starting that high up. And then it moves. It, it, it might make a situation where more place difference will show up, show up than it used to, um, specifically in the teens and possibly in the 20s in certain rows. Um, we'll talk about that if it specifically happens and stuff. I don't think it's anything major. Just one of the things I, I want to see with this new qualifying format of how they're doing or how they're setting the grids up and stuff. Uh, but past that, this is my preview for Las Vegas. Um, I'll be live for the truck, Xfinity, and Cup Series race this weekend. I'll have an Xfinity Series video out. I'll have a truck series video out. Um, but anyway, this is basically like my Las Vegas. Like nothing should – look, we have we have everybody fell in line towards the end of last year. We, we understand how they were earlier in the year. We shouldn't see anything drastically different from what this is looking like, okay? If we see drivers that have been running well – in these races entering this year, they should fall in line here. Okay, are we look? At, do we want to look at Las Vegas and how they ran in 2022? No, it makes no sense. Do we want to look at how they ran in the first year of the next gen car? No, it makes no sense. I fully believe that recent form is the main thing and the main tell for the next gen. Okay, so let's just kind of keep rolling with that, and and we should be able to land on uh, on guys that'll compete to be uh, race winners and, and lap leaders and stuff like that. I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. So, bye-bye.